I'll start this video by showing you the effect that this thing generates because for its size and for the cost, it's really very impressive, but it does it by what appears to be really clever means. I've not opened this up yet. I was waiting for you guys to get here and then we'll open it up and see what's inside. But the gist is that this is a remote control laser or projector. Uh, you can enable just the red laser and it goes through a series of quite tightly defined patterns. Or you can enable the green laser, which multiplies those patterns for because it's a brighter effect. Or you can combine the two lasers. And if you wish beyond that, you can also combine multiple colors of LEDs, which kind of swamps it out here. Uh, I think I prefer it just with the lasers on their own because it's a very strong visual effect, particularly for the power it consumes, which is very impressive. But anyway, I have shown you the effect. Let's take it apart. So the first surprise was just how small this was. It's one of these things that when I saw the listing, it looked quite big, particularly given what it does. And the listing describes it as 60 patterns, LED laser projector light, RGB disco DJ party bar club stage lighting. It cost £16.79. And uh, it is surprising. Now, they, they describe this as 60 effects. I would actually say it's 30, but even that, uh, ultimately... If you say that, you know, the red is one effect and the green is another because there is a difference between them, then that does make up the 60. So they could twist it in that way. But I'm impressed that they've even managed to get 30 into this, particularly given what I think is the way it works. So if I turn this off before pointing it at the camera, note that this is a, it doesn't look so bright in the bench under like flood lighting, but when pointed at a wall in a modestly lit room, it's actually pretty good. It's a bright light, maybe too bright for eye safety. It runs from a USB power supply. Uh, it, the cable that comes with it is literally just USB to jack. And the unit appears to have a red laser uh, behind, it's got the effects disc inside, which I think I'm looking forward to seeing that bit because as I say, I've not opened this yet. Uh, I really am interested in seeing the effects disc that creates all those effects because I reckon it's just one rotating disc with some very clever diffraction gratings on it. I should turn this up the right way so you can marvel at the seals. I'm not really sure why. It's got pictures of seals on it. Uh, seal party. Excellent. Here is the LED and uh, unusually they've got... It's designed to actually create a mottled pattern from the light. It's got red, green, blue chips behind it. There is the green laser, and the green laser has one extra addition. It's got another diffraction grate in front. Because the green is much brighter, and also because it's closer to the peak spectral sensitivity of the eye, it has that bright effect. They've split it into multiple patterns. So effectively, what you're seeing is the same effect that would come out of the red port down here is multiplied a huge number of times uh, by this extra diffract diffraction grate in the front. It's got a fan in the back. Uh, power consumption. <clears throat> I noted this down. Red laser on its own, 160 milliamps. That's with the motor as well, but I think the motor will be virtually nothing. Um, the green laser was 370 milliamps. Both of them together, 456 milliamps. So really quite low. Uh, you could run this in a USB power bank. If you add the LEDs into the equation, red is 170 milliamp, green is 100 milliamp, blue is 130 milliamp. Put them all on together, it comes up to about 375 milliamp. And if you combine everything, red, green and blue LED and red and green lasers, it's 750 milliamp. So it's still, you know, well within the capability of a standard one amp power supply. Oh, the instructions. Let me, uh, it does have safety notices. Odd terminology here. It's got a timer on the remote that says, define time one hour, choose your love mode, and press the button, light of work one hour only. And it's got that for like one hour, two hour, uh, what is it? One hour, three hour, six hour, and eight hour. Uh, stage entertainment is playing from a light. Yes, it is. The warnings it comes with in small print, but good. This laser light is a class 3B product. It is prohibits to expose the naked eyes directly to the laser, otherwise it may injure the eyes. This is true. It is prohibits to let the kids play with this product. Definitely don't, don't let kids play with it. Before operate this laser light, every people must read the safety notes. And then it says, it's only for uh, 
indoor use, it's only IP20, don't use it outdoors or it may stop working. And it also has to be well ventilated because particularly the green laser is always a bit of an issue. Where is my screwdriver? Let's take the front off. Other things, the case, I should use a bigger screwdriver than that. What have I got here? I think this is a, a it's better. The case has a couple of holes, tapped holes in the side for mounting a bracket, but it's also got a tripod mount, but it's tapped through the thin metal. So it really is just a pretty much one thread. It'd be quite easy to strip that. So if you do decide to put on a tripod, uh, do so carefully. The eye warning. Have you been to a nightclub recently where the laser was just, the DJ had just set up his lasers and was firing them straight into the eyes of the audience? That is a taboo thing. Lasers, the people seem to be getting lax with them. The uh, coherent light from a laser does pose a high risk of eye damage. And if you consider that the green laser in this most likely has an infrared laser behind that to actually create the green light using nefarious means through crystals. Uh, then there's also an invisible infrared component. What's happening here? Is this going to help? Here is the main assembly. Actually, all that's left in the back is the fan now. Let's unplug that. This is quite good. What do we have? We have the small red laser module. We have is that plastic or is that metal? Where is a knife? Where is Kane's maker knife? That is plastic. I was kind of hoping it was going to be aluminum to actually take the heat away. Aluminium. Uh, so we have the red laser. We have the green laser in a much larger barrel and they're sort of siliconed in. Let's see if I can get this off. How much of this is going to be glued together? So I've got a screw here and then one opposing diagonally and that should reveal the mechanism. And it's going to be simple because I can pretty much see what it is already and that is amazing that they've managed to do that. It's a single disc has all those patterns encoded in and diffraction gratings. That is all we have. A geared motor, which is a... I, I can hear it ramping up and down a bit in speed. I don't know if that's just pulse with modulation from the control here. I don't, don't think there's there's motor stop. And if you do press the motor stop, it just stops at the effect it's at. But if you, because the it has this extra diffraction grating in the front, in front of the green, it creates that sort of morphing pattern. It, if you stop, it just stops dead. There is only one motor. It's not going to keep morphing in that pattern in any way. But all it does is it stops it cycling around. And this is divided into specific wedges. I feel the need to count these wedges. One moment, please. Yes, I can confirm it is 30 different effects. That is incredibly impressive. And just shining a laser through this disc in any one of those positions will actually fire that effect. And they're very sharply defined. They're very good. Under here, this lens that was glued in and I pulled it off, is a standard uh, three-chip red, green, blue LED. Let's take a look at the circuit board. Will I take a picture of the circuit board? I will take a picture of the circuit board so we can take a closer look at this. There's not going to be anything major on it, but let's do that anyway. Also... Why is it when it's plugged in? Why is it that when it's plugged in, I noticed a red and green light? Does this have that, even when it's turned off, where is the power supply? Does this have the facility to charge a lithium battery on board? I get a sneaky feeling it does, but I could be wrong. Um, when I take a picture of the circuit board, we'll be able to see, but when you, you've turned this off, so that's it on, this is it off, I still see red and green on this battery here. So is that a TP4? It is a TP4056. This thing is designed to operate with an optional battery. Oh, there's the connectors there. Right, tell you what, let's investigate this. I shall be back in one moment. Let's explore the circuitry. I'm not going to draw this out as a schematic. I'm just going to go over this because it is a very repetitive circuit. It's basically microcontroller and lots of transistors switching different things. 
But things worthy of note, the incoming supply and the lithium cell position, which isn't actually used in this unit, they could just add a lithium cell theoretically onto that. They both go to the on-off switch via a diode each, so that one can't backfeed into the other. That means that you can't plug a 5 volt supply and it goes straight to the lithium uh, battery. So the two diodes uh, sort of isolate them from each other and also provide polarity protection. So that switches uh, via this switch to turn the power onto the circuitry. Uh, even when it's off, it's got the facility to charge the lithium cell via this uh, TC4056A and the circuitry here surrounding it, you've got that a decoupling resistor and uh, capacitor there. You've got a 2K resistor here that sets about 500 milliamp charge current. Uh, and you've got a couple of 1K resistors here for the LED red and green just to sh show uh, charging and fully charged. And then the output to the battery just skips underneath uh, the circuit board. The, the back of the circuit board has just a smattering of tracks on. There's not an awful lot there. But uh, the track goes from here up to here. Uh, and basically it goes to pin 5 of this uh, output of this charging circuit. It is just a standard 4056 charging circuit. The other, other complicated bits of circuitry are... The microphone here is designed to detect peaks of noise and it goes through a very basic sort of filtering and a, a buffer to a couple of transistors being used to buffer the signal up to give a signal to the microcontroller to actually trigger sound activated effects. Not something I'd, I'd be too keen on. It's basically uh, it swaps between lasers or lights when it detects a peak or it flashes the whole output, which is pretty horrible. <clears throat> After that, we've got... Uh, a transistor here switches the motor. Very simple. We've got an infrared input here. Just goes straight back. It's got a decoupling capacitor across. It goes straight back to the microcontroller for receiving signals from the infrared remote control. The button also just uh, clicks and signals back to the, uh, to the microcontroller just as a button input. We've got the red, green and blue LED have the common positive and then a resistor per colour. And they've chosen 100 ohms for red and blue for extra intensity. The green, because it's a high intensity colour anyway, they've chosen a slightly uh, higher uh, resistor value. I should say 10 ohms for those ones and 15 ohms for the, uh, for the green. And they're just switched by these three transistors. The lasers are slightly different. They're switched by two uh, transistors. Uh, via these uh, 2 ohm resistors and the 5.6 ohm. The red laser is the 5.6 ohm resistor. The green laser, which is higher current, is uh, 2 ohm. But they're both being powered. Their common is coming from this little circuitry here, which uh, is based on an E100, uh, an inductor, a capacitor, and then uh, circuitry to probably set a voltage divider, or unless it's set for a specific voltage. But uh, this generates a 3-volt supply just for those lasers, because the lasers are high current, and if you're just doing it from the 5-volt supply, these resistors would get very hot. So by using a controlled voltage, um, and also it means that you're going to get a constant current through the lasers, whether it's running from the lithium or from the 5-volt uh, incoming supply, because it pre-regulates it. So it's less critical with the red, green, blue, which on the lithium would just be a bit dimmer. Uh, but with the green uh, and red lasers, you want them with the correct current, otherwise they won't laze properly. So that's why they've used a separate voltage regulator for that. Is there anything else worth mentioning? I mean, that's it fundamentally. Microcontroller runs the show. It just turns the motor on and that goes through all those effects. Uh, it can switch independently, red, green, blue, green laser, red laser. The fan comes on as soon as you turn it on. There's no control over the fan because it's always got to be running for cooling. And I'd guess that if the lithium battery, it's been charged about 500 milliamps or so, I would say that if they put a 2 amp hour cell in, you'd probably get three or four hours runtime just with the lasers, not with the LED. Uh, but just with the lasers on, you get a fairly decent amount of runtime from batteries. But that's interesting. You can also plug this into an external a USB power bank. It's high enough current that it will keep it awake anyway. But the really interesting thing here is this disc. That is clever. They've, I guess they've got a very finely patterned uh, surface that is pressed onto that disc to put those... Uh, those different uh, diffraction grating effects in as a series of fine lines that uh, split the light up in the way they do. Interesting patterns. But there we have it. It's, it's very straightforward. It's very simple inside. Um, I would say that the green LED laser will probably fail at some point because they usually... 
They usually do. It's just how it is. That, uh, they, they're running it with a very simple current regulator and there's no proper real heat sinking. Uh, maybe that's why when it's first turned on, it alternates between the green and red lasers. It doesn't really mention that in the instructions about not leaving them on all the time, but uh, the greens are prone to suffering uh, damage, you know, when they're just run for very long periods of time. It just seems to be a standard thing. And the little gearbox is just a, a standard sort of three volt ish um, geared motor. I wonder, it'll probably have a 3 to 6 volt range. I don't think there's any extra current limiting. I think it goes straight over to that transistor and that's it. But there we go. It's interesting. A very neat little light. It certainly packs a punch for what it is. But while it's novel, I'd say only project it. Well, make sure you don't project it onto people because uh, that is a fairly high power, particularly the green laser's high power. And you don't want to actually damage people's eyes uh, with the laser because, they, you know, if you go to a controlled event, a proper organised event with a proper laser company. The laser company will set the lasers up, they'll all be calibrated and they'll go around the meter actually checking the intensity, the highest intensity points in the audience. With uh, When you go to a nightclub, if the DJ is just blasting, they go for the highest power laser they can find, they just fire them out into the audience with utter disregard for people's eyesight. That's worth mentioning that if you ever go to a nightclub and they are just firing lasers into the crowd, uh, try and find a position in a nightclub that does not involve any exposure direct to your naked eyes to those lasers because uh, that just runs that risk of uh, eye damage. But there we go. It's very simple, but it's a very neat effect. Uh, still don't know why they've chosen to have pictures of sea lions or seals in the front. Very strange. But there we go. It's an interesting light. I do actually like that quite a lot because uh, that little disc with the, the patterns is very, very clever indeed that just rotating it in front of the lasers produces such a complex series of effects.